Hi, I'm Joe Daniel from JoeDanielFootball.com. Today we're taking a look at the Stack 4-4 defense and why even though I think this is a good defense, it needs some tweaks before it's really something you want to run with. It's simple. I see it a ton in youth football. Uh, youth football, I see a lot of this and a lot of the 5-3 stack or the 3-5 stack. Uh, and both of them are great defenses, but I think you need to make some minor tweaks to it. You can still use everything that you're already doing with it. Just make some minor tweaks to make this a much better, more effective defense. So basically what we have in this is we've got stacked defenders here. And that's why I use the two tight ends because we're going to play a, a head up two technique on the guards with our nose and our tackle and our jack and our mic, uh, whatever you want to call your inside backers is going to be directly behind them. And then we've got our defensive ends who are going to be head up uh, six techniques on your tight ends. And then we stack these backers behind them. So that's the stack variation of it. And then what we do on each play, and you've got different play calls, and you can slant strong, slant weak, pinch, um, you know, with your defensive line, and then your backers are responsible for the opposite gap. And I got just a base cover three shell behind it. All of that is fine, and within your interior guys, I don't think you really need to change anything. You might loosen your inside linebackers up just a little bit because they're going to have plenty of time to get to that A gap if they need to. And I know, especially in youth levels, we're seeing tons of the ball being move to the outside uh, sweeps, just give it the fastest guy they got and trying to get him to run around the edge. So I might loosen my backers up to a 30 outside shade of the guard, just a little bit wider. It's, it's a foot difference, it's not a big deal. But otherwise, interior, I think we're fine. Where I think we need some adjustments is gonna be on the outside. Now, since we're gonna be slanting our defensive ends, it's not the same as what we teach in our 425 defense e-course uh, where you know, this guy's playing a head up six technique and he's gonna have to punch and eyes inside and all this kind of stuff to play the reach. He's gonna be slanting, so there's no reason for him not to play that head up six in this particular style of defense. Where we run into problems is the fact that one of these guys is gonna be your force player, and this is what gets missed out on a lot. Now again, what's the best play in youth football? It's normally this or this, right? The ball is trying to be run as fast as possible on a toss to the numbers by the best athlete that's on the field. And here you are with your defensive end and your backer who a lot of times aren't your best athlete. Um, they might be good, but you know, even if you've got a guy that matches speed with him, he's only gonna be on one side. They just have to run the other way. So a lot of guys will take their best guy and put him right here so that he can run and make those tackles there. Pretty good strategy, but let's shore this up a little bit. So what I wanna do about 80% of the time, I wanna be consistent in who's gonna be my force player. This guy is gonna go inside most of the time. I'm gonna move him outside just enough to where they have to respect it. And 80% is just a number. Um, what I wanna do though, is I wanna take these guys and you're gonna see that this shell ends up looking like our 425 defense. And again, I, I stress this as much as I can. What I teach in the 425 defense e course that's available for JDFB insiders is a 4 4. It is the same thing as a 6 2. You just change the names of these guys. It doesn't matter. Okay, so it is going to look just like that 425 defense because it is the same thing. I'm going to move my guys out. They can stay at linebacker depth at five yards, or you can move them up a little bit, but I want to move them out to about three yards wide. Now, I like to play these guys even wider, but I'm not running a stack 4 4. I'm going to keep, in order to keep my stack 4 4 mentality and keep the same play calls without changing anything, I'm just going to move these guys out to about three yards outside. So they might be four to five yards off linebacker depth. Always keep your linebackers at five yards. They need the room to read. A lot of guys walk them up here and they just end up getting caught up in the wash. Give them the room to read so that they can run downhill. This running back standing at six or seven yards off the ball, your linebacker standing at five. If he gets a good read, he should be able to meet that guy at the line of scrimmage. Play to meet guys at the line of scrimmage, not to meet them two yards in the backfield, okay? So what we've got here is I've got, I'm just widening these guys out a little bit. What I wanna do is I wanna align my guys to where I'm aligned where they are going and I'm going to meet them on the way. Most of the time, this guy, and, and the fact that, maybe not most of the time, maybe your team's really athletic, but the fact is the team that you have to beat, the best team in your league, that guy is really fast and probably faster than one, if not both of these guys. So I'm going to align them where that guy is going and meet him on the way rather than aligning my guy tight inside where he's got to be able to run almost as fast 
to the edge to get there. So I'm giving him just a little advantage because this is going to be my force player. Force player is the guy that has to force the change of direction. When this guy tries to run outside, he's got to force him either to cut back to the inside or to bubble to the outside where now my pursuit and that really fast free safety and the linebackers can get over top. So this guy is going to align about three yards outside and I can go even wider. Um, sometimes we go as wide as five on the weak side and as wide as seven uh, on the uh, wide side of the field. Uh, we play a little bit different there. We get the free safety over when he goes that wide, but I'm going to put him where that guy is going and meet him on the way. That means that most of the time, my defensive ends are going to be playing C-gap. Now, you're not going to be playing two tight end formations all the time, so this isn't going to matter uh, where this guy's slanting inside. It just tells you that this guy is most of the time going to be slanting inside and playing C-gap, particularly on the strong side. And on my weak side, you know, if I don't have a tight end, he's going to be shaded uh, on the outside shade of that tackle and he's just gonna be playing C-gap like a normal defensive end would. Now, what this does for you is when you decide that it's time to bring one of these guys on the blitz, when you decide that it's time to bring one of these guys on the blitz because you're not doing it very often, you find the right time, okay, I know that this is maybe a third and short, they're gonna to try to run an ISO play Right? They're going to try to ISO us and B-gap right here. I know that's coming. When I do that, because this guy is out of the offensive lineman's field of vision, because he is spending most of his time playing out here, when I loop this guy outside, now he becomes my force player, and he doesn't have to be great at it because I'm, he's not doing it that much. Okay, So he doesn't have to be great at it, so I don't have to waste a ton of practice time teaching him how to attack an outside shoulder and be a force player. And when I bring this guy to the inside that small percentage of time, 10, 20, 30%, maybe even, when I bring him, they are not going to be able to pick that guy up very much. So it's a really minor tweak. Again, I'm not changing anything in here, and I'm not changing my play calls at all. I'm just adjusting the alignment of those outside linebackers so that they're in a better spot to force the play. I'm making sure to call my plays so that they are forcing the play, meaning that they are the outside guy most of the time and then I'm opening up the ability when I want to bring them to the inside to really get them there and make them more effective. So it's just a simple tweak on a stack 4-4. There's nothing wrong with the stack 4-4 uh, but I just made a couple little tweaks here to make it a little bit more effective especially because we know that youth football guys are trying to get to the edge as fast as possible. Love to hear your thoughts on that. You can post them in the comments down below here and check out JDFB Insiders. Go to JoeDanielFootball.com and then click on the join button at the top to find out all that we have to offer. We've got that 425 defense e-course. There's hours and hours of video instruction on how to run the 425 or 44 defense, plus tons of other information for JDFB insiders. Sign up, look forward to seeing you on the inside.